What's the most horrific natural disaster in your opinion? For us, it's an earthquake and the subsequent tsunami that can follow. Most tsunamis are caused by earthquakes near the sea floor that cause a substantial amount of water to be displaced. That water is pushed out in the form of a succession of waves that move in all directions. There have been several terrible tsunami episodes throughout history. One of them is the Boxing Day Tsunami. You'll learn about the circumstances on the ground that day, the devastation it caused, the casualties, and much more. So stick with us to the end. A powerful underwater earthquake measuring 9.15 on the Richter scale generated a series of tsunamis that surged across the Indian Ocean on the morning of December 26, 2004. The earthquake was the third biggest ever recorded, the largest in the 21st century, and it lasted between 8 and 10 minutes. The raging waves slammed the coastlines of 12 Southeast Asian countries, killing 227,000 people and creating massive damage and disaster. The earthquake struck at 7.59 a.m., ripping through an undersea fault in the Indian Ocean, driving a tremendous column of water onto unsuspecting beaches. The city of Banda Ake on the northern part of Sumatra was the closest to the epicenter of the strong earthquake, and the first waves arrived in just 20 minutes. When the waves hit the shoreline, they reached a height of 130 feet or more in some places. It's difficult to comprehend the 100-foot seething mountain of water that overwhelmed the coastal metropolis of 320,000 people, killing more than 100,000 men, women, and children in an instant. Buildings collapsed like houses of cards, trees and automobiles were washed away in the oil-black rivers, and almost no one caught in the deluge survived. The tsunami lasted for seven hours. Communities around the Indian Ocean's surrounding coasts were destroyed, making it one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history. The direct consequences disrupted living conditions and businesses in coastal regions of surrounding nations, with Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, the Maldives, and Thailand suffering enormous devastation. Officials in Indonesia projected that the death toll would eventually approach 200,000, mainly in Aceh province in northern Sumatra. Tens of thousands were reported dead or missing in Sri Lanka and India, with a high number coming from the Indian region of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Maldives, a low-lying island nation, reported over a hundred casualties and massive economic damage. Thousands of non-Asian tourists on holiday in the region were also reported dead or missing. The shortage of food, clean water, and medical treatment combined with the immense job confronting relief workers attempting to deliver supplies into some distant places where roads had been devastated or civil war raged added to the tally of casualties. Long-term environmental damage was also severe, with settlements, tour attractions, agriculture, and fishing grounds destroyed or inundated with debris, bodies, and plant-killing saltwater. The tsunami struck the coastal provinces of Fanga and Phuket an hour and a half later, with waves racing at 500 miles per hour across the Indian Ocean. Despite the time lag, residents and tourists were fully oblivious of the impending disaster. Curious beachgoers even ventured out among the strangely receding waves, only to be pursued by a churning wall of water. In Thailand, over 5,400 people were killed, including 2,000 international visitors. An hour later, the waves struck the southeastern coast of India near the city of Chennai, sweeping debris-choked water kilometers inland and killing over 10,000 people, largely women and children because many of the men were out fishing. But the island nation of Sri Lanka suffered the most destruction, with over 30,000 people washed away by the waves and hundreds of thousands left homeless. As evidence of the tsunami's unprecedented strength, the last victims of the Boxing Day disaster died nearly eight hours later when surging seas and rogue waves caught swimmers off guard in South Africa, 5,000 miles from the quake's epicenter. The quake was caused by a megathrust fault, which occurs when heavy oceanic plates subduct beneath lighter continental plates. The unsparing destructiveness of the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami was attributed to the raw intensity of the earthquake that caused it. The 2004 earthquake shattered a 900-mile section of the Indian and Australian plates, 31 miles below the ocean floor. 
Rather than delivering a single severe shock, the quake lasted a relentless 10 minutes, unleashing the equivalent of thousands of atomic bombs. Massive sections of the ocean floor were pushed inward an estimated 30 or 40 meters throughout the operation. The effect was similar to dropping the world's largest pebble into the Indian Ocean, creating ripples the size of mountains in all directions. According to Jose Borrero, a tsunami researcher at the University of Southern California and the director of eCoast, a marine consultancy based in New Zealand, an earthquake and tsunami of the magnitude that struck in 2004 are so rare that catastrophic tsunamis are all but unknown in the long cultural histories of India and Sri Lanka. This was the most catastrophic tsunami occurrence since 1960, Borrero adds, alluding to the 8.6 magnitude Chilean earthquake and tsunami that devastated the Pacific, destroying Hilo, Hawaii, 15 hours after the quake. In the days following the accident, victims were discovered and recovered as the rest of the world watched in horror. Hospitals and morgues were overwhelmed with injured and befuddled victims. One reason the accident may have been so devastating is that the authorities were unable to send out a notice because lightning struck Indonesia's sensor system. In 2019, 15 years after the accident, Reuters reported that some experts say apathy over system upkeep is leaving millions vulnerable, and governments continue to warn of the ever-present risks. Despite massive investments in a large network of seismic and tsunami information centers, the news agency stated that doubts abound about how prepared countries on the Indian Ocean truly are for another giant wave. The 2004 incident demonstrated unequivocally that there was nothing in the Indian Ocean in terms of technology, public awareness, or infrastructure preparation. There are still significant gaps in the protection of people from tsunamis in the Indian Ocean. It's quite simple to install high-tech sensors that can detect a tsunami in the open ocean shortly after it forms, but it's more complicated to prepare infrastructure for the onslaught and educate people on how to react and get to safety. World Vision Australia raised almost $118 million for relief and rehabilitation initiatives because of the extraordinary generosity of the Australian public, Business Australia, and the Australian government. These donations contributed to World Vision's $356 million international partnership response budget. Worldwide donations totaling more than $14 billion. 12,000 homes, 200 child-friendly spaces, 84 schools, 60 playgrounds, and 27 health clinics were created by World Vision. They constructed roads, bridges, farms, factories, marketplaces, boat building facilities, and a fishing harbor. Their coastal restoration projects included the planting of 56,000 mangrove trees to act as a natural barrier against increasing sea levels. World Vision's tsunami response projects are now complete, but the organization continues to work with tsunami-affected communities throughout new development programs aimed at increasing children's well-being. New programs for child sponsorship, livelihoods, education, health, and disaster mitigation are in the works. Long-term community development activities continue to be funded by World Vision in Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, Thailand, and Myanmar. World Vision also funds emergency relief programs in Sri Lanka's conflict-affected districts. Total material losses from the tsunami were estimated at $10 million. That's it for today. We'll see you very soon in our next video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Turn on the notification bell to get notified about our latest video. Take care. Thanks for watching.